Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or in the internet. In the last episode of Know Your Mind segment, we spoke about Jesus' prayer at Gethsemane as a case of subconscious reprogramming. In this episode, we consider Jesus' last supper discourse as a case of subconscious reprogramming. John the Evangelist, in the 14th to 17th chapters of his Gospel, presents a prolonged conversation of Jesus with his disciples that ends with a lengthy prayer of Jesus addressed to his Heavenly Father for himself and his disciples, which is often referred to as the Last Supper Discourse or the Farewell Discourse. Let us focus for a while on the content of Jesus' Last Supper discourse with his disciples. In this address, firstly, Jesus comforts his disciples by asking them not be troubled in heart, but to believe in him and his Father. He tells them that the Father is in him and he is in the Father. He is going to the Father to prepare a place for them and he will come back to take them to himself. Secondly, Jesus assures them that those who believe in him would do greater works than Jesus himself had done. And if they ask anything in Jesus' name, the Father would grant them. Thirdly, Jesus speaks of the intimate relationship with his disciples by using the allegory of the vine and the branches and asks his disciples to be united with him just as the branches to the vine in order to bear abundant fruit. And being united with Jesus would bring them true peace, which is different from peace the world gives. Fourthly, speaking further on Jesus' relationship with them, he tells them that it is not a master-slave relationship, but it is a love of friendship. For as a good friend, Jesus has chosen them to be his friends and has laid down his life for them. Fifthly, Jesus tells his disciples about the world's hatred for them because they are his disciples and the sufferings they have to undergo. However, they need not be over anxious and the troubles this world brings will pass away for two reasons. Firstly, the advocate, the spirit of truth, whom Jesus will send from his Father, would guide them in every way. And secondly, Jesus has conquered the world. So they should stay courageous by being united to Jesus through him to the Father and by being united to each other and among themselves. Finally, Jesus praised his Father, expressing his happiness in glorifying the Father by accomplishing the work he has received from him. And he is grateful to the Father for glorifying him with the glory he had with him before time began. Then Jesus prays for his disciples and those who will believe in Jesus through their preaching and hands them over to the Father so that they may be protected from the evil ones and may remain united to each other as Jesus is united to his Father. That which made Jesus to interact with his disciples in this manner was his personal concerns about and feelings for his disciples, whom he felt were not yet fully ready to accept the responsibilities and sufferings associated with the leaders of the movement he had just begun, as they did not fully understand the implications of their call to be Jesus' disciples. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him. Judas Iscariot would betray him. And all his disciples would be disillusioned and scattered at his death. Jesus was also aware 
of their inner bickering among themselves as to who was the greatest and who would sit on Jesus' right and left when his kingship would be established. Besides, Jesus was also feeling for his disciples as to how they would be without him by their side to direct and guide them as he had been for the last three years. Though Jesus' primary intent of the Last Supper discourse was to allay and assuage his personal concerns about and feelings for his disciples, and to come to terms with those concerns and feelings, he also used this address to premonish his disciples about his imminent suffering and death, and to motivate and strengthen them to remain united when he would be no more physically present to them. Jesus lets the Last Supper discourse happen in an atmosphere of prayer. He pours out his inner concerns about and feelings for his disciples, not only in the presence of his disciples, but also in the presence of his heavenly Father. He places his fears, doubts, worries, anxieties and concerns about his disciples and how he feels for them as his time has come to leave them alone in order to accomplish the plan of his father by dying on the cross. He desires in the depth of his heart that his disciples may stay together united and do not get scattered in the midst of uncertainties, doubts, fears, and lack of faith when he dies. He strengthens them by saying that though the world would hate them, they are dear to him and his heavenly father and promises the advocate the spirit of truth whom Jesus and the father would send to guide them in their life once he is gone. In the final prayer, Jesus unburdens and hands over all his concerns about his disciples and feelings for them. What he desires to happen in their life when he is no more physically present to them and each of his disciples and those who believe in Jesus through their preaching in total surrender to his Father in faith, love, hope, gratitude and with a deep conviction that all is going to be well with his disciples under the loving care of his Father. As Jesus was communicating his concerns, feelings and desires for his disciples in faith, love, hope and gratitude, he was also communicating in the depth level to his subconscious mind. This deep level communication to his subconscious mind helps Jesus to let go his negative emotions of concerns, fears, worries and anxieties about his disciples and fill his subconscious mind with positive emotions of faith, love, hope and gratitude towards Jesus' heavenly Father who would make everything right for his disciples. As a result, Jesus feels internally strengthened. Now he is certain that everything is going to be fine with his disciples as they are under the loving care of his father and the guidance of the advocate, the spirit of truth. Besides internally strengthening himself, Jesus also uses the Last Supper discourse to help his disciples to reprogram their subconscious thoughts and beliefs, thereby motivate them to be prepared to face the events of his suffering and death with courage, determination and faith. Thus, the prayerful communication with his father during the Last Supper discourse helped Jesus to reprogram his subconscious mind, replace his negative emotional state with positive emotional state, feel internally strengthened to carry out the plan of his father for the salvation of the world by dying on the cross. John narrates in the first few verses of the 18th chapter of his gospel that Jesus takes the first step in this direction by going to the garden at the Kidron Valley, gets arrested, being betrayed by Judas Iscariot. Thus, the farewell discourse is an actual case of subconscious reprogramming for Jesus and his disciples. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.